Hey everybody, gonna do a little bit of work today on the B10, the early B10 with the hydro lift on it. So this is what I did a couple weeks ago. You've seen a video on it, I'm starting to take it apart, but I want to kind of show y'all how easy it can be to switch the rear ends in it. I'm not doing the bevel gearbox on it. That's not even a lot much more work. But the problem with this one, I showed y'all last time, is that axle tube. It is really, really toast. Toast and some half. I know I've heard other people say that's notorious for these. I have literally never broken one of these. And I've got, what, 10 of these tractors? So, I don't know. I guess if there's somebody that can break anything in the world. But what I want to do here is I want to show you how easy it can be to do it. I got the replacement rear end out of a parts tractor. So we got this one. I'm cleaning it up a little bit before I stick it in there. Because what I'll do is I'll put it in there, we'll wash it, and then I'll paint it while it's in the tractor probably. And then I'll sand and paint the rest of the tractor too. Take it apart and do it. But the biggest thing is first, I want to make sure everything's all right. We also got all the stuff now to fix the high-low. I got all the pieces for it. Thank goodness. So what I'm going to do here, I've already got the... Mule drive off, basically. We'll set it over here. Pulled the rear seat cover off, which is not, it doesn't take an expert to know how to put do that stuff. So the biggest thing is now we need to go ahead and pull the belt. We need to start unhooking all of the stuff on the back here. Pull it all apart. And we gotta drop the rear end out from under it. So it shouldn't be too bad. Pop that one back in it, see how good this thing works. So what I'll do now is I'm going to go ahead, pull the pulleys off, the belts off, loosen some stuff, and I'll be right back. All right, so a little update on this. Everybody just keep in mind, this is, once again, very, very simple. Things you're going to want to undo is the brake. Pops it right out. The high-low on this one's not particularly hard to do. You'll see on the back, kind of angled there. There are two Allen uh, set screws, super easy to put in. Now. You just want to make sure to have a long enough one to do it. Once again, pull off your mule drive. And then keep in mind, these holes here are blind, so they go they, they go through all the way through it. So when you drop it, you can make a big old mess. Trust me, I've already figured that out. So there is, it goes directly into the housing, so it will leak pretty crazy. You want to make sure to unhook your gear shift unhook the lift if it has it and then once again we are one bolt here from dropping the holder in popping that one in it all right might need two hands on this hold on and pop it out all right now so got some of that together so the toughest thing with the jack is setting it up so everything's going to actually go back in very easily so got all it done and keep in mind i'm gonna clean all this stuff i just wanted to get it together first and i'll probably believe it or not i'll probably pressure wash everything and then sand it down because eventually this thing will paint it all back and make it super sharp but the biggest thing first let's get it so it works so i got all this stuff done so once again one two three bolts here you got to make sure that your this is a post goes all the way through make sure it's lined all the way up that's actually what your brake and your tensioner pulley does for your drive system we got all this stuff hooked back up we obviously bolted gear shift back on things i still got to do i need to i thought i had to take this off but i didn't i need to tighten these bad boys up this is the newer style brake stuff so it's a little bit easier all you have to do is pull that one cotter pin out back there pop this one out two three and once again the entire rearing comes right out of the back this has actually been a pretty, pretty easy swap. So the biggest thing is now get this thing back on, clean it up a little bit, figure out what color I'm painting it. I'm guessing old cat yellow is probably going to be on the books. And if I need to, eventually I may take the whole top stuff off, say I'm blast the frame, put it back. I do need to go ahead and replace this messed up stuff here. It looks like they someone took a later model steering rod 
have a longer tractor put in it. But I'll figure out what's going on there. I don't know if the steering arm or something's different. I'll pull it off the other parts frame I got. So let me go ahead. What I'm going to do now, put on the mule drive, put that stuff back on, get this thing kind of bolted back together. Probably wait till next weekend to do some more cleaning and painting. But get it back to rolling state with a good rear end. And I did check this one, by the way. So notoriously, they'll start to pop right here or they'll crack in between the the grease zerk. I'll flip this thing back. One or the other. And that's that's how they get the, the damage to them. Right there. So stay tuned. We'll finish this one up. Alright, and the little last thing on here. Got it all back together. Got everything working on this. So you see it's out. And you see it's in, and out, and in, and out, and in. So I still probably need to adjust all of the belt stuff because I have no idea how far. Someone had the brake on the other rear end tightened all the way in. Checked all the fluids, set all that, greased it all up good. Cleaned this wheel up a little bit. I'm going to try a little bit first, see how it works. And then on the other side... And by the way, it was a kind of a fight getting that rear end set up in there, but it's it's all in there. It's a lot easier when you use a jack and you can set it down. So we hook all the mule drive stuff back on it once again. It still needs pressure washed, cleaned up. Put all the right hardware back in stuff just so it's in better shape. So hopefully next week I'll pull the gas tank out, clean it. Clean the gas tank and put a battery in it. I think it should be okay to play around with. I might need to rebuild the carburetor. It did run before, as y'all seen, but it might not hurt to go through it and clean it up and check it all out. In total time, it probably took about two and a half hours to get it all done, bolted up. By the time you take the wheels off, I did a lot of cleaning and stuff too. You wouldn't have to. If you just want to get it in and out, you probably get it in an hour and a half, probably if you really need to. Hour and a half, two hours to hook it all up. But I will keep continue to do more with this little thing. I have never had one that had the high-low. So I'm going to check it out, see what it's like. I'll let y'all know. See if that thing's any good. The fingers or the dowels that actually go in here, they have a little bit of play in them. And then the back one. So eventually I'll have to get somebody to make me some of those probably. But then I also have a couple other pieces. There's another whole almost unit. Everything but the actual thing inside of it. And I greased everything up too, by the way. You do have to pull that little 7 16 bolt out. Put in a grease cert, greased it up. The planetary gears in it, so it'll work good. Once again, my goal is just to keep stuff nice and make it last longer, so. Alrighty, thank you for watching.